In a lot of ways, the movie Bonnie and Clyde from 1967 changed cinema forever. It was directed by Arthur Penn, written by David Newman and Robert Benton. Bonnie and Clyde is the story of a real life couple who in 1930s America, during the height of the depression, went on a crime spree of bank robberies and murders and were pursued by the law. The two characters, main characters of Bonnie and Clyde are played by Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway. You also have Gene Hackman playing Buck Burrow, who is Clyde's brother. You have Estelle Parsons playing Blanche, who was Buck Burrow's wife. You have Michael J. Pollard, who is playing C.W. Moss, who was part of the Bonnie and Clyde gang. And you have a little cameo by Gene Wilder, who plays Eugene Grizzard. The heart of this movie, it is a heist film and a chase film, two of the most time-honored genres in cinema history since the dawn of cinema history. Originally, Warren Beatty was just going to produce the film. He had seen this for a as a vehicle for his sister, Shirley MacLaine, of possibly playing Bonnie. But when Beatty decided to play Clyde himself, that of course was thrown out the window and Sir Lim Clayton doesn't even appear in the movie. Warner Brothers threw some money at this film. They did not think this was going to be a big hit. So far so that Warren Beatty, this is the, I believe the first film he produced, Warner Brothers Studio gave Warren Beatty 40% of the gross instead of his minimum fee at the time because they thought the movie was, wasn't was going to go anywhere and they thought this was a money-saving tactic. Lo and behold, it's a big hit. It went on to make seventy million over $70 million at the box office and 40% of that money went to Warren Beatty. Even though it is based on a true story of Bonnie and Clyde, it is a highly fictionalized account of Bonnie and Clyde. Yes, there are some aspects of the movie that are true, but like in any movie of true life events, it should not be taken as documentary, not be taken as the whole truth. Movies are nothing if they are not highly stylized versions of real life. And there is a certain grittiness of this movie that was really not part of the Hollywood landscape at that time. We're coming off of a time that was heavily into musicals and heavily into traditional family. Even though this is the late 60s and the world was changing, this is the first time where you ever had a very stylized movie that portrayed everything with such a graphic sensibility that was produced by a major Hollywood studio. So much so that Warren Beatty and Jack Warner, who was still the head of Warner Brothers Studio at that point, got into several arguments about the style that this movie was to portray. Jack Warner wanted it to be shot in the 30s and 40s style of gangster films that Warner Brothers was known for in the 30s and 40s. This did not go over well with Warren Beatty, who was producing the movie. One of the legends had it that Jack Warner told Warren Beatty, and if you've ever been to the Warner Brothers lot, you know that there's this big water tower with Warner Brothers and WB on it. Jack Warner said, told Warren Beatty, allegedly, we don't know if this is true or not, um, that that is his name and his only name on that water tower. And Warren Beatty said, well, WB is my initials. We all know who was victorious in this fight. Warren Beatty obviously came out the winner of that fight. And in the end, Warner Brothers and Jack Warner came out a winner because they got to reap the benefits of this huge hit during the time. 
But Warren Beatty is the true winner because he got so much money from this movie. Jack Warner did end up hating the final film that was produced even though it was a huge hit. Arthur Penn, who ended up directing the movie, also came out pretty well in this movie. He received 10% of the profit participation in this movie. Warren Beatty was the one that had the script shopping around to everybody. Arthur Penn at one point passed on the film. There were there was William Wyler that they went to to possibly be the director. A lot of people passed. They ended up going back to Arthur Penn and when they agreed to make certain changes in the script he signed on. Another thing came out of this movie it was the Bonnie and Clyde look especially the character of Bonnie portrayed by Faye Dunaway that whole look that she portrayed in this movie which is not of the time that the movie takes place in the 1930s but more of a modern take on it it became a fashion moment in the late 60s people even today imitate the look of bonnie parker but not the real bonnie parker faye dunaway's bonnie parker and this made the sale of beret hats skyrocket in 67 68 so if you ever want to blame something for the popularity of berets, don't blame the French, blame Bonnie and Clyde. One of the things that happened with the distribution of this movie, because Warner Brothers didn't have any faith in this movie, was the concept of Warren Beatty came up with was premiering in things like drive throughs where he knew a lot of younger people would go to see the movie. And it was a slow roll release and it got this kind of buzz about it. People were talking about it. It was making a lot of money at these screenings until Warner Brothers caught on that this potentially was going to be one of their biggest hit movies and gave it a wide release in regular movie theaters. At the time of its release, it became Warner Brothers' second highest grossing movie at the time. So the first highest grossing movie that Warner Brothers had at this point was My Fair Lady. And then that was in 1964. And so 1967, Bonnie and Clyde became their second highest grossing movie. And at the time that this movie came out, it received mixed reviews by critics. It had bad reviews in the New York Times, Time Magazine, and Newsweek. But Paula Kale wrote a 9,000 word raving review of it and Roger Ebert who had just started being a film critic something like six months before this movie was released called it a masterpiece of our time. It was not a critical darling but the people who loved it really loved it and on the other hand the people who hated it really hated it. It was taken to the Montreal Film Festival and there it got standing ovation after standing ovation and that was part of the way that Warren Beatty convinced Warner Brothers to finally give the movie a wide release and if you know anything about the studio history 1967 was also the year that Warner Brothers changed hands and in the middle of making this movie, Jack Warner was no longer the studio head even though it came down to him giving the okay to make it. The studio changed hands and even those people weren't happy with this movie and didn't want to promote it either. So nowadays this movie is considered one of the greatest movies of all time, oftentimes in the top 50 of movie lists. 1967, if you look back at the history of that year in movies, was kind of the turning point in movies where you had, you know, it was still going along with the old Hollywood system and they were big movies and and wholesome and all of that. And the, this movie, along with several other movies that came out in that year, you know, where you went to the grittier kind of 1970s style movie. And this movie's budget was only like two and a half million dollars and it made over 70 million dollars in the box office and even today this movie makes Warren Beatty money because he still owns 40% of 
this movie. So every time you buy it on streaming or DVD or some place gives money to be able to show it, Warren Beatty is still making money from this movie. As well, of course, Warner Brothers is still making money from it. So for the Oscars, Bonnie and Clyde in 1968 received 10 Academy Award nominations, uh, included Best Picture, Best Director for Arthur Penn, we have Best Actor nominee Warren Beatty, Best Actress Faye Dunaway, you have both Gene Hackman and Michael J. Pollard getting nominated for Best Supporting Actor. You have Estelle Parsons getting nominated for Supporting Actress, and she does go on to win that award. Uh, you have Best Writing, Best Cinematography, which it won Best Cinematography, and Best Costume Design. So out of the 10 awards, it won two of them that night. And just so you understand the kind of pivotal year that 1967 played in movie history, it can be shown in the nominees for Best Picture. So you have Bonnie and Clyde um, being nominated for Best Picture, which was a nomination for Warren Beatty since he was the producer, he would have gotten that award at, if it would have won. You also have Guess Who's Coming to Dinner being nominated. Dr. Doolittle is nominated. The Graduate is nominated. And In the Heat of the Night is nominated. And In the Heat of the Night, which is another great movie, is the one who wins that night. But you just see that divide in Hollywood with those five nominees of old style and new style coming in one. And this is really the first year that you see that happening. But some of my favorite movies also came out in the year 1967. Besides Bonnie and Clyde, you have Guess Who's Coming to Dinner is an excellent movie showing stars in their twilight with Katherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy, but along with showing sort of the new school with Sidney Poitier in it, you have The Dirty Dozen coming out, a spectacular film. Like I said, In the Heat of the Night, spectacular. You have Cool Hand Luke coming out. You have The Graduate coming out. It was just a really good year for movies. So if you're a new movie fan, if you're young and you have not seen Buddy and Clyde, definitely, definitely check it out. Add to Warren Beatty's fortune by finding some way to watch this movie. Um, you will not be disappointed. Like I said, if you're a new movie fan, I encourage you to watch these movies. Go back in time and watch older movies if you're a old movie fan and you love this movie, I'd love to hear what you love about this movie. Or I'd also like to hear everybody's opinion about the year in film that was 1967. What was your favorite movie that came out in this year? And if you are a new movie fan and have not checked out many movies from the year 1967, I encourage you to get a list of movies from 1967 and watch as many as you can. Study film, learn about it. There are some great movies out there and a great movie in Bonnie and Clyde. So thank you for joining me. My name is Stacia and I love movies and I would love you to subscribe to my channel if you've enjoyed this. I talk about movies here and I would love for you to join the conversation and talk about movies too. I'd love for you to give me a thumbs up, give me a comment, but please subscribe. I would love to get more subscribers. I'm almost to 130 and I love each and every one of my subscribers. It's appreciated. Even small subscriber accounts matter. I'm looking forward to get more and more of you on board and get the conversation going. But as always, I love you all. See you next time. Bye.